were there in 1908 when Eastern Suburbs charged to victory in our very first game. We were there three years later to see Dally Messenger's Dynamos claim the first hat-trick of premierships. We were there in 35 when the legendary Dave Brown steered us to another three straight titles. We stuck solid through the hard times like 66, when we didn't win a single game. We were there in the 70s, when Artie's Invincibles reigned supreme. We were there in 02, to climb Rugby League's Everest once more. And we'll be there again in 2007. After 100 years and 1,000 first grade players, we celebrate a century of glory for the Sydney Roosters in the greatest game of all. That's Kyle, beaten. And Mullins, Mullins for the line. From tricolours to roosters, 100 years of tradition. To most of us, it's beyond challenge as the greatest city in the world and home to the greatest football club on the planet. It could be a try, good is over. They're on the march to the minor premiership. The champions are the Sydney Roosters. From humble beginnings as a penal colony, the city of Sydney rapidly developed into a thriving metropolis. It was the birthplace of our nation's federation in 1901. And seven years later, Sydney's favourite winter pastime was born. Eastern suburbs were at the forefront of this bold new code. They were one of the first members of the New South Wales Rugby League, founded at Paddington Town Hall on January 24, 1908. Crucial to the success of not just this new club, but the sport itself, was a man whose name is still revered a century later. Herbert Henry Messenger, better known simply as Dally. Well, Dally Messenger was the rugby league itself, the best ever, and uh, that, that still sticks in today. Dally Messenger, he was the only person that I know of in rugby league where they changed the rules because of things he used to do. Wentworth Park was the venue for Eastern Suburbs' historic maiden game. And even without Messenger in the side, they were still too strong for Newtown, 32-16. The Tricolours were beaten just once during the regular season. But in a situation that would seem farcical these days, they saw six of their best players, including Messenger, set sail for the Kangaroo Tour of England on the day that the 1908 finals began. One can only wonder what might have been, as they lost the first Premiership decider by just two points to South Sydney at the Sydney Showground. Under Dally M's direction, they eventually took their maiden title in 1911 by edging out Glebe in the grand final. It was also in that year that East adopted the Sydney Sports Ground as their home, a base that would serve them well for the better part of the next 75 years. Sydney Sports Ground was the Eastern Suburbs paddock, that was ours. And uh, I believe that the Eastern Suburbs played five or six points better there than anywhere else. We always relished when we got drawn to play at the Sports Ground. As Rugby League continued to grow in popularity and strength, so did the Tricolours. A change to the competition format in 1912 gave the Premiership to the team that finished first and Easts lost just once all year. It was a similar story 12 months later, when they completed a hat-trick of titles after having their colours lowered just twice. 
it was the perfect way for Dally Messenger to hang up his golden boots. But it was to be another decade before Eastwood reached the summit once more. In between came the devastation of World War I, and instead of playing football, young Australians went off to defend the Empire. After the end of the conflict in 1918, life gradually returned to normal. And five years later, eastern suburbs added their fourth title when they denied Souths in a thrilling decider. The rest of the decade brought lean pickings, but another golden era was just around the corner for the boys from Bondi. Times were tough in the first half of the 1930s as the Depression hit hard. Out of those dark, difficult days emerged one of rugby league's greatest ever club sides. Well, eastern suburbs in the uh, 30s were uh, thought of as the best rugby league team East have had. They were the only team in the comp as far as we were concerned and uh, I was just dying with the day that I might be able to get in the side. 1935 was arguably the most successful season in the club's proud history. The tricolours were club champions, reserve grade winners and first grade premiers in comprehensive fashion. They were beaten just once in that campaign, during which they inflicted an 87-7 massacre on competition newcomers Canterbury, which still stands today as the Roosters' biggest ever victory. Incredibly, 45 of those points came from one man, Dave Brown. Dave Brown was, in my eyes, the most brilliant player. He was the, uh, the Gaznier of the 30s, and uh, he stands very high in the eyes of all rugby league players as one of the greatest. The freaky centre evoked memories of Dally M with his match-winning talents. Yeah, it's quite incredible, but, you know, we, we all knew of Dave Brown. Dave Brown was, uh, you know, I, I, I still look at all of his record. With Brown at the height of his powers, East remained unbeaten in the Premiership for the next two seasons to earn their second hat-trick. The 34, 1935, 1936 sides just swamped the opposition. It was a massacre. They were the greatest rugby league side you've ever seen in your life. They were far from being a one-man band, though. Of course, he had great uh, support with uh, Ernie Norman and Jack Beaton. Viv Thickness, Ray Steer, Harry Pearce, Joe Pearce. They were legends, fantastic footballers. The golden run came to a halt in 1938 when they were outplayed by Canterbury in the final. And a year later, the world was again plunged into war. While bloody battles raged on faraway shores, East extracted revenge by downing the Blue and Whites 24 to 14 to earn the mantle of 1940 premiers, even without the injured Dave Brown. On the same day that the Japanese formally surrendered to the Allies in 45, eastern suburbs produced one of their most remarkable premiership triumphs. Dick Dunn etched his name into league folklore by scoring all bar three of East's points in a 22-18 win over Balmain. Alas, it was to be East's last hurrah for nearly three decades. The Tricolours were to reach the semi-finals just once in the next 15 years, Eastern suburbs during the 50s and 60s had a very, very hard time. South, St George, Canterbury, Parramatta, they were terrific. In those days, there wasn't such a thing as an easy game. In 1960, Eastern suburbs returned to the grand final for the first time since 1945. However, the gallant Easterners were steamrolled in the decider by a St George side that made it a record six straight crowns. Reaching the grand final was simply the start of an amazing roller coaster ride that eastern suburbs would undergo in the next two decades. Hey guys, thanks for taking a walk through some Roosters history. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to watch the next segment where you will learn more about the rich history of the mighty Roosters. As always, hit like and subscribe to keep up to date with more Roosters videos.